All right, chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day. This is a PCA 9557. Um, it is a I2C chip. You, you write and read I2C to the chip, and then it expands that into an 8-bit parallel. So if you're creating a system, a lot of times you're I.O. limited, or you don't want to run traces on the PC board, and I2C is really nice because it's just two wires. And so you can bring two wires out to something, and if that particular thing doesn't itself have I squared C control, you can add one of these and uh, and make it go. So it's um, eight bits. So I squared C in eight bits in and out. Uh, you can configure it as either in or out. You can actually invert the. So if you set it to one, it outputs a zero, I guess. Uh, you can add that. Now this this chip is special on the. Uh, it's zero through seven out, and the zero um, output is actually open drain. So we'll talk about that later. Um, and the pinout looks like this. It is a 16-pin device, clock and data. There's three address lines, so you can configure each chip from zero to seven. So you can have uh, eight different types of this chip on the bus, and each one will have a different address. And then there's eight output input pins, and then there's a, a, a power on reset pin. All right. Let's see, I have a couple things highlighted. Uh, it operates at 2.3 to 5.5 volts. So you can run in a three, three volt system or a five volt system. Uh, you can source uh, 10 milliamps and sync 25 milliamps. Um, and I think that's about it for electricals. It's pretty basic. Uh, yeah, so here is the, uh, the output pin zero. And you can see uh, here that it's open collector. And then it has protection diode. Uh, and then it acts as an input this way, okay? So uh, this one uh, inverses the polarity. So if you uh, write polarity pulse, yeah, anyway, it inverts the data. And uh, here's a configuration register, whether it's input or output, I think. And then here is the normal pin. It has a, it has a push pull out it output, so you can either pull it high or pull it low. Uh, so that all all the other seven are that way. So you talk to this uh, device with uh, uh, I squared C at. Uh, I squared C addresses 24 to 31, depending on what, how you have it strapped. There's a control register that you talk to to set it as an input or an output or inversion. Um, let's see here. Then there are registers. Input port register, output port register, fine. Uh, polarity inversion, fine. Configuration register. Those are all of the bits that you need to write. And uh, yeah, then you just either read or write from it, and away you go. I have used uh, chips like this before, not this particular chip. So the reason that I'm going to be using this chip on a project I'm working on is because I have a little bag of them. I got a, a little grab bag at the local store for a dollar, and I got a whole bunch of parts. So I uh, figured, well, I got them. I might as well use them. I have used I2C expanders before, though. Uh, I've used them on these um, on these L two line LC LCD displays, and you can get a little board that converts it to uh, converts it to I squared C. Um, so this is really nice instead of having to worry about about ten lines of eight lines of data, and you, you can kind of multiplex it at four lines. Anyway, it's complicated to, you need to talk to par Parallel to operate these these displays. These displays are super, super cheap, so you want to use them. And then this little board here converts it to I squared C, so now you just have to talk to it with two wires and 
and uh, yeah, that that works really really good. Um, and then uh, I've used I built this board, and it uses a oh, what chip did this one use? This one used a Philips PFC eight five seven four one. So you'll find a lot of uh, Philips chips because Philips invented I squared C. Made a lot of money off that one. And then this chip here is a 16, 16 bit decoder or expander. So I squared C and you get 16 lines out. So if I were gonna do that project that has the Nixie tubes, I would have chosen this chip, but because I've got a whole bunch for free, I'm gonna use this instead. This is an MCP 23017. This one's by microchip. Uh, so yeah, so nice little board. You need to have a whole bunch of parallel output lines. You don't want to burden your microcontroller. You just use the I squared C and then it's a, it's, it's like free IO. All right. So yeah, so I say we should probably try to make one of these work. Um, I put, I put one on a uh, adapter board here so we can, uh, we can put it in a proto board. So let's, uh, See if we can't make this thing do something. All right, so I have an uh, Arduino Nano that's gonna talk to our part. Here's the I squared C lines right here, uh, A4 and A5 on an Arduino Nano. And it's going to our chip, and then it's gonna light up some LEDs, okay? They're hooked up to some of the uh, IO lines. And so uh, when you go to write code these days, you don't write it yourself. <laughs> you just tell ChatGPT what you want. I said, I have an Arduino Nano and I want to write an Arduino sketch for a PCA 9557. I want to configure it as output and I want to have a, a loop that counts. As, and I told it that and it created code and it ran. <laughs> so here's the code that it created. Um, let's see here. I've got a, I've got a battery pack. I'm gonna power this thing up. And there we go. Um, it worked. I mean, yeah. Why would anybody ever learn programming these days? You just have ChatGPT do it for you. It's amazing. Um, and yeah, there you go. All right. So the program just. Uh, takes the address of the part. It says, I'm going to be writing to I squared C device address so-and-so. I want to write to their control port. I want to write to an output port. Here's the data. It's very standard I squared C stuff. And it wrote the code and away it goes. All right, well, that's chip of the day, a PCA9557. And this will appear in another project that I'm doing, which is a I squared C controlled Nixie tube driver.